Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic Indie Creator interview. It is your Cape Crusader, Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our returning friend, Nina Amberlin. We're here to break down Sunrise Blossom, Volume 1, 2, and 3 in our launch party. How is everyone doing? We have DJ over on YouTube stopping in. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the stream. Nina, how have you been? Busy, creative. <laughs> God, I've been working so much, but like in such like a positive way recently um and i am really 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 looking forward to finally click that go live button because oh my goodness i was panicking because i couldn't find i couldn't find the launch button i was like oh, oh crap oh where is it google help I don't yeah, we had we both had technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> Nina couldn't find the launch button. My microphone didn't want to record. Uh, but here we are. We are ready to uh, just launch on all cylinders. Uh, you know, before we begin, I really have to give you a big shout out. We were talking about this uh, before before uh, we went live, but I really want to just like put it out in the air. If it wasn't for you uh, retweeting, there was one tweet in particular was I was reaching out for indie creators because I wanted to start interviewing. And I remember you retweeted it and it was like an hour after that I had like hundreds of people like liking it retweeting it leaving comments and that's like what jump started all of this i i remember it to a science so thank you if it wasn't for you like retweeting that um i don't know where i would be right now you know and that just goes to show you how big that ripple can get uh from just one retweet so thank you thank you a million times over that makes that warms my little italian <laughs> heart <laughs> so how have you been since you've last been on uh, it was interview two and now we are up to 136 so there's been a lot of time that's passed oh good uh i've been working a lot created volume three and shall we press the live button are you ready yeah yeah let's hit it okay wait i've got <laughs> another button to press hold on tom i'm totally gonna sound clip a uh, drum roll in there <laughs> <laughs> let's go we are officially live uh, and we're gonna be taking a look at that kickstarter too but let's kind of give a breakdown you know of, of of you as well you know uh you know what sunrise blossom is uh for anyone that's new that's watching it for the first time well um sunrise blossom is a modern fantasy lgbt romance comic that focuses on ivy a young gay redhead harpy who is blooming into womanhood and there's a lot of drama some action romance so much fucking drama sorry i said the f word is that oh, okay you, you, you can cuss go ahead go so ahead so much fucking drama <laughs> this is your party you can cry if you want to <laughs> Heck yeah a lot of drama uh i'm saying drama a lot drama lesbians bird girls so like this is volume one it's 223 pages long it's, it's a massive volume and it's entirely in black and white while the second volume this is volume two it's a little bit shorter for 53 pages but it's entirely in color and look how pretty it is <laughs> so, so i remember yeah. oh go ahead so yeah gay birds that's it. <laughs> and drama. Uh, so I remember when we first were talking, we were talking about like your creative process with like the background and you know, cause you are the, the, the sole creator on this, the writer and the artist. Uh, and we were talking about that and like looking at these interiors for volume three, like, holy crap, is it gorgeous? It, it looks like, have you taken any like classes or, or is it just like drawing after drawing and you know, like, well, well what's your secret? Cause it definitely, it looks so gorgeous. Well, I did go to comic school straight after high school like i did a three-year course um in, in comics so a three-year comic school and that helped a lot but it the, the kind of comics they teach you to draw here in italy are the kind of comics that tickle old men balls and so i had to learn relearn most of it mostly through the internet feedback with others interacting with others trial and error and that's how we got to our current looks so like this is volume four what four frick volume two <laughs> not four <laughs> this is volume <laughs> two is nice and pretty and volume three looks even better and i recently started working on volume four i know this is this is the launch party for volume three but i just 
like I just start finished like the script and everything for volume four earlier today and i am so freaking excited for yeah it yeah that's four. so awesome oh my gosh well I, I mean not to suck my own wiener but uh volume four i i really can't wait for it because it's like my favorite so far and i just i just can't wait and like volume three well let's go yeah yeah let's go let's go let's go that is so awesome so how are you feeling right now i like you what was some of your like feelings and emotions leading up to uh this day like has it been a pretty pretty like busy week for you i'm hot um it's it's hot i mean sweaty <laughs> and honestly it's a bit hard to focus on anything else like i've got a fan right here blasting in my face the ac right behind the table blasting in my direction and but i am like super excited like you know that feeling where you're not really thinking of you're thinking of everything and nothing all at once and it's like mm -hmm. your brain is going on auto mode um yeah so let's uh i guess let's talk a little bit about volume two like you you just had a successful campaign for that in february uh mm -hmm. you know what how was that for you with your kickstarter like you know your campaigning and then the after you know like the fulfillment process how did that all, that all go for you it went super smooth because like tech when i launched volume two and this is true also for volume three everything was ready the art was all done the formatting was all done the italian translations were all done all that was missing was the funds so i could send to the printer and ship and that is true also for volume three so technically like within a month and a half of the campaign ending, most people had the books already in their hands. That's awesome. Like within a month, yeah, within a month and a half. And for people over in the US, it was also pretty fast. And also the shipping isn't super duper expensive as it sometimes is with these Kickstarter campaigns because I don't know if you're familiar with Critical Blast, mm -hmm. but they, they offer a logistics service, uh, particularly like for people in Europe or otherwhere, uh, elsewhere in the world to ship to the US and vice versa. So pretty much instead of having to ship all the books individually from here to there, I would like ship one big box over to them. Oh, that makes it easy. And would, yeah, and they would ship it domestically, which made it safer because everything was much track. It was trackable <laughs> and easier to follow and faster. We have a, also like they only had to go through customs once. We have a DJ Black stopping in over on YouTube to say hey and give give some love oh, as well. Oh, so many DJs. Yeah, so many DJs over in chat. <laughs> any uh, any of you guys that have a question, feel free to ask. Ask away. This is uh, your guys' party too. If you have any questions or anything you want to learn, you know, feel free to ask and we'll get uh, Nina on that. So, Nina, what's some of the big things people can expect from Volume 3? You know, uh, what, what, what were some of the... Uh, you know, dynamics and, 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 and I guess uh, cliffhangers we can expect and, and, and things that are going to grab us and, and pull us in. Well, volume three. Uh, so like to like also like give a rundown with the previous volume, volumes. volume one contains 200 plus pages, extra pres pay extra pages that are not present in the webcomic version. Uh, cute harpies, cute harpies and maid outfits and cute lesbian <laughs> harpies and maid outfits. <laughs> And yes, I am reading this off the, the Kickstarter page, but that's good. Well, the second volume, this one right here, uh, contains 53 pages, beautiful red-headed harpies, sexy Scottish old men, tearful and heartwarming <laughs> reunions, and maybe some exaggerated romance tropes, but it's really cute and it works. <laughs> well, the third one, which is the one that we're here for today, includes mom finally going to therapy, oh. new friends, Birthday girl celebrations and hot bedtime girl pinning girl down action. Let's go. Let's go. We have Ian stopping in as well. Ian, welcome to the stream. How have you been, my man? Hello. And uh, D DJ Shaddy. All right. I'm going to ready all my questions. Uh, let me advertise this stream as well. Thank you so much. Thank it's you so much. Uh, so girl on girl action. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, I think technically like a, a part of that scene is also like showing with the images where she's like pinning her down she actually mm -hmm. pins her down twice in that scene <laughs> becomes like a wwf wrestling match at some point <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, so, you know, there, there's a lot of interesting things to uncover here, but I, the, the, the biggest one I want to talk about is the therapy. That is a big thing to kind of go through. Like, how was that for you, like, writing and, 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 and creating that out? Well, I wanted to show, well, normalize it a bit, because in the first volume, both the main character and technically her biological mom go through some fucked up shit. And I mean, it's the kind of shit that you need help recovering from. And I know that very often, like in TV series, films, comics and whatnot, whenever something traumatic happens, the next day people are like, yay, whatever, life is fine, nothing happened. And I, I wanted to normalize the concept of therapy a little bit by having the main character's biological mother acknowledge that something is wrong and she mm -hmm. needs help and having also her friends and family pretty much help her reach out for help and go to see a therapist because it's something that should be normalized and should be happening especially with a lot of parents parents go to therapy please we have uh, both DJs in chat saying mood. Uh, I gotta agree. I, I have to. I, I have to agree as well. I, I, I never. I didn't plan for the DJ thing to happen, but uh, hey, we're we're running with it. Um, so th therapy is such a heavy thing too. I mean, you don't realize you need it until you go to it, until you actually like follow the steps and, and really start to unpack. I remember, you know, my therapist. Like when I went, uh, it, it was a really weird uh, situation. They cried. I was like, I don't know if this is supposed to happen during therapy session. Like, am I oh, that no. like? Is my story that butchered? Like, what's going on? If you make the therapist cry, you win. <laughs> they pay you. I get 50 points? <laughs> <laughs> Yay, <good> therapy. <laughs> So I really like how you kept that in like continuity, like having them experience something, you know, I don't like the, that they experienced that, but uh, having them go through something like that in volume one and then bringing it back in volume three, uh, do you find it hard to kind of keep this uh, level of continuity intact? Not really, um, mostly because I do have like a general idea, like in my mind of how the plot continues. And I do want some things not to branch out too much and if they do branch out to maybe somehow come back in later on mm -hmm. and the character uh that is the main character's biological mother so ivy's biological mother is a character who is very important in particular in the first volume and so is her biological father and she went through some fucked up shit and she developed coping mechanisms that were what allowed her to pretty much continue and survive in the environment that she was in mm. but after rem being removed from the bad situation that she was in she was really really struggling to break out of those habits pretty much and was break and was falling back into behavioral patterns that were unhealthy for her but that she had clung to for so many years as a coping mechanism until uh her friend partner we don't really know what it is at this point is like you know what i'm going to make sure that you get the help you deserve and he accompanies her to a therapist's office and minor little cameo i don't know if any of you are a fan of centaur world but the the therapist is actually uh elktar elktor from the centaur world animated series which i thought was a really nice touch and a lot of people noticed it oh that's the, the that's cool version. yeah that, that's yeah, so a lot cool. of people were like man you don't want elktar to be your therapist <laughs> so why not though I, I have no idea who that is can you give us a a, a little breakdown He's the villain. Oh. <laughs> but I really, really liked his character design, so I just wanted to do a tribute. So, man, it's there's so much. I love how just deep you got with this and uh, breaking them from that like survival, uh, that survival uh, mechanism. Like you know, your fight or flight. Like when you're in survival mode, I, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, you're mm -hmm. always in that. So having them break away is like such deep character development it's like it's unreal just how much you pack within these characters therapy is character development everyone take notes <laughs>
and I, I really think it's important to uh to really put a spotlight on that as well uh dj shaddy i have my questions that might have to think of more sure. yeah feel free to ask away yeah yeah that's what we're here for also we're just over 100 euros so far i like one fifth through the the campaign goal dude let's go holy crap <laughs> taking notes taking notes so how <laughs> long have you been uh working on this uh you know from volume one to, to present day like how long has that been all together Four years. That's remarkable, like, though. That's remarkable. Like, how many uh, pages are the other two volumes? Well, volume one is two hundred and twenty-three pages. Volume two is fifty-three pages. Volume three, no, volume two is fifty-three pages. Volume two is three frick words, are fifty pages. So, all in all, it's nearly. It's like three hundred plus. Math. Yes, it's 300 plus pages, yeah. <laughs> Basic uh, math, oh my so god. So, DJ Black, trauma is character development. It really is. I mean, it's not the <laughs> best way to get it, but it does. It, I can't argue it. Uh, DJ Shaddy, when your comic first blew up, how did you feel about that? The thing is, though, it never did blow up. Like, I do have over 2,000 subs on Webtoon and, uh, like almost 2,600 at this point, And I do have like 1,300 subs on Tapas, but I never blew up because that growth has always been slow and gradual. I never had a boom moment, which on one hand is like, we well, can here for four years. When is my boom moment coming? <laughs> but on the other, so like on one hand is that, but on the other hand, it's like the growth that I've had so far is genuine and truly like the fruits of my own hard labor. And there's a lot of pride to take in that. No, they're a hundred percent. Like earning your keep is like one of the most rewarding things possible. I I know mm -hmm. for for me, I was doing uh, before we interviewed. I was reading three DC or Marvel books a week and covering geek culture news and getting you know a couple of views on videos and and like I've I've built up like my following like doing interviews and and like doing them daily and like putting that work in and like it wasn't like just like boo like all of a sudden i had what i have now like i built that through six months of doing this every single day and you really you really got to do it uh i think because i don't know like getting that growth all at once is nice but then it feels like there's just so much pressure and if you're not able to keep up with it it just goes away you know yeah and often enough like maybe if you get featured on the main page of like webtoon or tapas or or something like that like there's like that temporary boom but then it can be really, really disappointing to see that after that, your growth, it doesn't continue much. It doesn't keep up to the same rate. So it's something like, like, uh, hold on, like, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like being like a one hit wonder almost, right? Like you get your, exactly. your, your, one, your one famous song and then no one ever listens to you again. I'd rather have, you know, my, 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 my handful of people watching me instead of just like, a bunch at once and never again. Mm hmm. Exactly. So we got. And some like, questions. it's nice. It's nice to get like the boom, but then it's. You don't really keep that up. You can't really keep mm -hmm. that up. So, uh, do you plan on making volume four? <laughs> I finished scripting it today and it's. <laughs> glorious volume four like honestly i honestly can't wait to get this done because story-wise it's easily my best volume yet and i am so excited to get volume four that out. is so there awesome is so much going on in this oh i can't wait to finally draw it big big excite so what's that how long does it typically take you to draw out like a page uh from from a script for you um well the way that i do it normally is that like so like first i do the script and i normally do it like with pencil doing it like this so you can't read um, <laughs> <laughs> on pencil pencil on paper mostly because it's easier to get my thoughts down that way uh then i do also like the storyboards on paper like this because it's easier to get my thoughts down uh, and stuff and envision it then when i move on to the the digital format you know from like preparing the background sketches line art coloring i'd say maybe 
an average of, of about four, six hours a page, give or take. More or less, that's, yeah. That, that's, that's not too bad, though. That is not, that is not, that is not too bad. But then it's we're remembering we're times in that by 50, 60. And then whew, that adds up quick. <laughs> Uh, so DJ Black, what was the first design of your character? So like Ivy, what, how did Ivy look for the first time? So if you want, I can send to you like some of my very, very early 29, 2018 designs. Of so the character uh, on, if you want on, twi on Twitter, yeah. If, uh, are you uh, you're familiar with Streamer? Do you want to share it? Are you able to? And then I could add it to, you know, uh, I am a OK with that. Hold on. OK, so these are like my early like pretty much character sketches good question dj black because. by the way this is awesome and like this is what they looked like uh when i first started preparing the and this is the main character back in 2018 and like considering she looks like this now there you go like this so it's like a lot of development and this is when i was first preparing for the web comic back in 2018 but originally um sunrise blossom was born as a very short project for comic school because i was attending comic school at the time and one of the projects that they asked us to do was a short three four five six page project in a cartoony style um, instead of a semi-realistic style depicting whatever we wanted and so i had this idea of you know like this lady driving in the night accidentally hitting a bird with her car and waking up with a half naked harpy in her bed and this is what it initially looked like back when i did it in comic school entirely in black and white pen and it's, ink. Al it's almost like a completely different feel yeah it's very <laughs> very different and I don't have all the pages because it was like a five or six page project, but I, I don't know where the other ones were. But yeah, it's like the, the human character is a lot more cartoony. The bird is a lot more realistic. And over time, I managed to find a compromise between the two. Oh, that is cool. Let me go ahead and get this removed from screen. We'll go back to our original layout. <clears throat> so dj black uh, what was your first thoughts about your characters when you first created them um i don't know i really liked them at first i enjoyed their character design but over time i truly did learn how to like fall in love with them like that that's really <laughs> the the driving force the main driving force that is keeping me like continuing on mm -hmm. this project because i love my characters so much it's like they're they're my babies and i'm the only one who can bring them to life and help them continue their story and that's also pretty much my main driving driving force no that is awesome and then here's a really good one do you have any tips or i wish i've known this sooner that you want to tell beginners big time and oh uh, my gosh i am honestly sometimes so jaded when i see maybe creators that are starting for the first time on a lot of like maybe like discord servers because i'm in a lot of discord servers that are like um comic related because like mostly like the, the 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 global comics discord server and the tapas discord server and almost every day i see creators who are brand new and they're always asking the same questions and always making the same mistakes as if like Google didn't exist that they couldn't <laughs> check first. And like over time I have been coming, I have become very, very jaded and I'm like, sure, go ahead. But really the, the biggest advice that I would recommend to any, any creator who is starting off for the love of God, please start small your first work unless you're mary fucking shelly your first work <laughs> is never going to be your magnum opus start small start maybe uh, a 10 page project a one shot maybe mm -hmm. a 10 page fan comic and once you're able to bring that to completion you actually have done a lot more 
so much more than so many people who claim, oh, I want to be a comic artist and then maybe give up on their comic within a few weeks because I see that so often and that's why I've also become so jaded towards some of these things because I see it like happen, repeat itself continuously, mm -hmm. start small. Once you're able to complete your first project, that's amazing. But and also at that point, you will always already have a better idea of what the process is like and what works for you. And then it'll be easier to start maybe with a bigger project. So maybe you can do something that is like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 pages, and then you'll be able to bring that to completion. And at that point, it'll be so much easier to jump into big, big, big projects. Like Sunrise Blossom was not my first comic at all like back in high school i would do maybe short little fan comics then i did our name was maya mm -hmm. which was about 100 pages and i was able to complete it and probably because i was able to start and finish our name was maya i was able to start doing sunrise blossom and four years later it's still going strong that is so awesome i love that i love that so much uh the starting small because when you if you start too big you might get overwhelmed and then if you get overwhelmed you don't want to work on it you start pushing it off and it starts like okay i'm going to work on this tomorrow when i'm in a better state of mind or i'm going to wait until the weekend so i have all day to work on it then the weekend happens and you don't then you're like oh i don't want to get overwhelmed today like i like that starting small uh and then working your way up getting that experience uh and then it also helps too because you have a finished product to show like artists to show publishers to show exactly. other creators like hey collaborate with me i can i can do this like believe in me like no mm -hmm. oh, that is great uh so have you ever had any fan art made uh for sunrise blossom oh big time actually i've got a whole if you don't mind me sharing my screen again yeah yeah yeah, yeah. a whole and then folder of fan I wanted, art i yep. wanted to ask that because dj shaddy was uh curious about when people made fan art about the comic how'd you feel about that so honestly, it, it always makes me happy whenever I receive fan art. It's like validation, pretty <laughs> much. It's like, oh yeah, people drew me this. So it means that people, oh, titty, sorry. So it means that people actually like this. <laughs> and some of them are, are really, really nice. Like some of these are maybe from like art trades or like secret Santas or, or stuff like that. And, and those are like really, really nice, but whenever they're particularly, they come like genuinely, maybe from someone who read the comic, felt inspired enough to like pick up their pencil and draw something, it's like- That one is, wow, that, that is so detailed right there. Oh yeah, there's, there's some of them that are really, really good. Um, and I'm like, it, it's really nice receiving receiving fan art it's it's validating i say maybe that's the main the main word it, it's validating it, it makes me feel like what i'm doing is right mm -hmm. people aren't it and yeah no that is so awesome these are also good i love that one too holy crap yeah this one is probably my, my, my favorite one drawn by Z, creator of Adarna and the Gods, and Three <laughs> Wishes on Webtoon, this one in particular. Ooh, it looks like we are halfway of your, your goal right now, 261 of 509. Oh, snap! Yeah, let's Hold go. I'll, I'll, I'm almost done going through the fan art. <laughs> she's she's, she's like, don't get me hyped while I'm looking through the art! <laughs> okay, there we go. That is awesome. So, I mean, let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the Kickstarter. While we're here, let's uh, let's actually pull it up and, and kind of go through it together. Oh, yeah, you're halfway through. Hooray. Yeah, so let's, yeah, let's get some hype halfway through. Is this a trailer? Yes. So uh, we'll watch this. Ooh, just Really fun thing about the trailer that I also advertised on the Kickstarter thing. Um, the trailer, I hired professional voice actresses to dub the characters. Oh, let's go. So there's like the first part of the trailer, which is pretty much like a, a narrator going through the synopsis. And then there's a scene of the comic that is dubbed by voice actresses. So we can watch this and we'll be able to hear it loud and clear on our end, but you might not be able to hear it on your end just because of the way the StreamYard thing works. Uh, okay. But just How to give you the heads up. I'm going to 
turn on YouTube with the sound so yeah, that yeah. I can hear. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. The waters have calmed down, and life has started returning to normal for Ivy. Until a young, dark boy shows up with interesting secrets to reveal to her. How will this impact her relationship with Violet? And will the raven-haired woman finally open her eyes to the harpy in front of her? You can rely on me too. I mean it. You can also rely on me. Violet. What are you? You don't resent me, do you? Ivy, why would I resent you? Yeah, th these emotions are so good. You had to so hurt good. people to rescue me. Thank you. You had to face that monster again. And because of me, you can't spend as much time with Mr. Jonathan anymore. No, Ivy, I don't resent you. Thank you. You're such a sweet child. <laughs> Violet, look at me. I am not a child. No. I'm you mommy. <laughs> I'm the mommy now. <laughs> That was so good. We have so much love in the chat. Uh, it feels surreal. Oh my God, so gay. My heart, so beautiful. Aww, nice goal. My my gay heart is happy. Oh, thank you. That was, yeah, I love that too. You could really tell, you know, voice acting is like such a insane thing, like to add that much emotion to your voice and be able to do it like that. That That's just, they it was so remarkable. Good. They were so good. I am really glad I was able to found to, to find them. They did a really good job. So we are looking at Sunrise Blossom, Volume 1 through 3, a GL and LGBT Monster Girl series about a lesbian falcon harpy and her human companion at 261 of 509. Let's go. Let's go. Five or backers. If or if you're European like me, 257 euros out of a goal of 500 euros. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're literally like an hour into this we have ian saying great trailer yeah i thought that trailer was awesome you brought a lot of emotion to it i thought a tear was about to drop from my eye um Thank it was you. beautiful it was beautiful so here is the story so far a coming of age story about ivy a young falcon harpy abandoned by her birth mother and raised by a family of owls while traveling with her sister to learn about human culture ivy has an argument with her and is separated from her only to be picked up by a human woman violet who helps her discover herself and bloom into womanhood but only it's only after a dramatic turn of events that ivy discovers her romantic feelings for her human companion and that mm. is what happens mostly in the first volume Ooh la la mm -hmm. so the waters have calmed down and life has started returning to normal for ivy until a dark God bless. a young dark boy shows up with an interesting secret to reveal to her how will this impact her relationship with Violet? And will the raven-haired woman finally open her eyes to the harpy in front of her? Mm-hmm. Atenta! <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay, bella signorina? I'm gay. <laughs> 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 uh, I, 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 
decided to give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is this is fun. I'm loving this so much. This is like my second launch party, and I gotta do more of these. These are so much fun. So here is a little preview of volume one. 200 plus pages, grayscale, extra pages not present in the webtoon version. So what are those pages gonna look like? Well, it's mostly some uh, a few pages that are near the beginning of the story that I cut off from the webtoon part because I felt it was slowing, the, making the beginning a little bit slower than necessary. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much here. I can show it here a little bit. It's a scene of Ivy's owl sister being the little bitch she is and taking a Sharpie and writing the name Buttercup on her baby's brother's egg and being like ah, ha, ha. now he is forever buttercup and then goes back to bed <laughs> oh, that is because, awesome funny little easter egg um the main character is nicknamed blossom by by her mother her little sister uh her little sister's pet name is boobles and their brother is called buttercup so you've got Bloss Blossom, Bubbles, Is and that Power uh, Powerpuff Girls? Okay. <laughs> well, that is awesome. So volume two contains 53 pages, full color, beautiful mm -hmm. red-headed harpies, sexy Scottish old men, cheerful and- Let me and the sexy Scottish. <laughs> She's like, hold, hold on one second. Grrr, daddy. Okay. I'm getting better at these uh, solo layouts too. I, I just realized a couple of interviews ago that you could do that where you can click and like like zoom in on the camera. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna start doing this more often. Nice. Tearful nice. and heartwarming reunions, maybe some exaggerated romance tropes, uh, but it's really cute and it works, trust me. Does it Does it work though? It does. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, shit like they're under the rain, they feed each, they, they, she gives her chocolate, she's got, a little bit of chocolate on her mouth and then she goes to wipe it off and then they look each other in the eyes and they're really close because he just wiped off the chocolate and it's like blush and then they trip and but it's raining so there's rain falling down on them and they're like both wet and they're like one on top of each other and it's like blush like, maybe i'm blush. jaded maybe i'm jaded but that just sounds like me being too wet wet socks and just a <laughs> horrible day <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's like it's like the classic romance trope of the kissing under the rain. Mm -hmm. It's not comfortable, but it's romantic <laughs> and it looks good. So, volume three, uh, fifty pages, full color. Mom finally going to therapy. New friends, birthday girl celebrations, hot bedtime girl pinning girl down. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh la la. So here is a look at the shipping rates. So, thirteen pounds for the United States. Is that pounds? Euros. Euros. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm American. But I'm sorry. Goddamn no, Americans. Okay. <laughs> but because the, the the dollar has been getting back up, the euro to dollar rates are almost identical right now. So the shipping is actually a lot cheaper than it was with the previous campaign because I, I still had to charge around 13 euros. But instead of like 15 bucks, it's now like 13, 12 to 13 bucks. Okay. But okay. Yeah. So that's not too bad at all. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, considering it, I'm shipping from Europe and there's lots of potential merch and stretch goals that we can take a look at later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here a, a look at some of the, is this an interior page? Also, hold on. Shit, we're at 328 euros. Oh, at the moment. shit. Eight Wait, let me change my thing to US dollar so I can... 334 share. of uh, 509. 334 dollars thank you people <laughs> thank you guys this is so awesome this is awesome congratulations how are you feeling right now like uh, let us know like how do you feel at this very moment uh, like you are like right over that home i am excited but also like hungry i'm having pizza tonight it's almost <laughs> 7 p.m 7 p.m it's like it's like 1 p.m for me you're in the future oh yeah you want me to tell you what happens in the future <laughs> Go ahead. Let's hear it. It's fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it rains. It was so it was super muggy here. Like I'm in Ohio, so we're, it's really weird weather. Like I have Lake Erie right to the right above me, so we get the lake effect. But then we get tornadoes every now and then, so it's it's mm. wild. It is wild. We have DJ 
uh shady over on youtube is it shipping internationally oh, yes it yes. is we were looking at the shipping rates mm -hmm. before i interrupted you sorry no you're fine you're fine let me go ahead and right here so right here are the shipping rates yes so it's about $13 to the United States, which I know, I'm sorry, it's not $2, but I am shipping from <laughs> Europe. And it is a lot cheaper than most campaigns that are shipping out of Europe. And considering, as I was mentioning, that there's volume one, two, three, and a lot of also stretch goals that are going to be like like little trinkets that are going mm -hmm. to be given for free. It's 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 a deal, definitely. So let's take like a look I'm at some... It close. Let's take a look at some of the... Uh, these are interior pages. Mm-hmm. Like this is part of the birthday scene. So here we have Fatima and Mustafa, are my favorite Arab cat siblings, who for the birthday party brought a little mouse to catch. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so what are we seeing right here? So here we have Ivy in the foreground with also the mouse in the foreground. The owl is Ivy's um, adoptive sister, uh, Amber, and the cat is Fatima. And they're all, they're all three of them are animals that like, if you like read part of the comic, you already understand it's them. But like it's from the perspective of the mouse. So it's I like gotcha. Big, three big predators. <laughs> no, I love it. I, yeah, <laughs> rip rip to the mouse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I, I love how detailed your art has gotten. It's like Thank I you. love seeing it like from each volume because like it just gets better and better and better. And honestly, like, I have an extra episode that I can show later that isn't out yet. So it's like an exclusive sneak peek. It's going to go live on, like, Webtoon and Tapas and Global Comics in two weeks, I think, or maybe mm -hmm. next week. And in that, I was also experimenting a little bit of an art change just to see if I could make it look more polished. And it looks like this is good. That looks so much better. So how much work does is it going to add to your plate though? Does it add like a lot more for you to do? It does, but also because my update schedule is that normally I update every two weeks, mm -hmm. and um, I, I normally have maybe around four episodes with a buffer when when I start posting, which means that I have like post one episode, but I have like four other episodes that are already ready that are not posted yet which are patreon exclusive until it's posting time what's your your patreon uh well uh, it depends so like well no if you, if, if you wanted to shout it out no no it's okay so my patreon is nina aberline i like the name here but uh, without the daisy pretty much <laughs> and like for one dollar a month you can get a sneak peek at the already completed pages for three dollars a month uh you get a sneak peek to both the completed pages and the sketch pages so that are still like in the works uh for five bucks you get access to all of that plus the not safe for work art Ooh. then i've got 10 15 and 30 dollar tiers and those have all the previous perks but also monthly commissions okay no that is really cool i really like those and then uh just just want to say this out loud too by funding this project you are helping in spreading awareness of social issues related to lgbt rights minority rights and women's rights but there's also some badass and lovable girls as well so mm -hmm. just wanted to give a big shout out to that as well and here are some more of the interior pages and that that hot girl v girl pin down <laughs> mm -hmm. i love how you kind of broke some of the paneling with these two this is this is really cool design well, it's something that is very, very common in vertical scroll uh, comics. So we have like having like flowers come out of the panels. And it's something that I wanted to try with the traditional as well, like try to include the flower aspect somehow. <laughs> You're such a sweet child. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a thing now. <laughs> I'm not I a mean, I mean, literally, my my marketing tag is gay birds. So, go off. <laughs> if you need a voice actor, let me know. <laughs> so I, I love this too, though. How uh, how um Ivy just like I'm not a child. I love how you like give her that that personality. Like you give her that character trait. Uh, you, you know, it's just, it, it's it's awesome to see her develop. Because mm -hmm. they do have a bit of an age gap like ivy just turned 20 and violet is like 26 and she does have very 
a, a very childish behavior, uh, mm -hmm. especially at the beginning of the story, which does like influence Violet not seeing her as a woman, but seeing her as like this quirky kid. But she does grow up a lot and she is sick and tired of being seen and treated like a child, man. Just give me those. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that's just what she wants. I mean, she doesn't say that literally yet, but volume four, maybe. We'll I love the pedal. Uh, are these, these are uh, feathers. Yeah, I, I love these, like going off the roses. And uh, man, th these eyes too, these, the retinas, like the color, the yellow highlights, like right around the, yeah, that Thank is gorgeous, you. detailed. So together with one and two, the following extra items are available. I'm gonna put this link in chat too. I totally forgot we had such oh, a good time. Sure. I forgot to put this link in chat. Guys, check this out with noticed. us. Um, If you are not checking this out with us, you're missing out. If you're not able to back, feel free just to share that link on Twitter or oh, Facebook. Yeah. Any Sharing sort of, yes. Sharing goes such a long way. Like, thank you so much. E even if you can't back, if you can share it, if you like what you see and you want to share it, that that helps a lot. Or even like so, a retweet over on Twitter, that also helps. No, a absolutely. Lot. Uh, because you might not be able to buy or back this project. Uh, you might have a friend or family member who would love this. And then this could be their next favorite thing. Uh, and it, all that's stopping you is one retweet. Flashback to the beginning. Nina retweeted my post looking for indie comic interviews, and I'm here 136 interviews later. So that's the importance. Uh, that's literally and case in point. And I was like, point. your second interview. Yeah, my second interview. interview. Yeah. yeah. So mind blown. Like, literally, that's the power of retweeting. So together with volume one and two, the following extra items are available. So we have volume one, two, and three cover prints as seen above. So uh, where, where are these... So above when I, when I was listing the contents of the various, oh right here, right here. So those are one, two, and three. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll back down. I'm trying to get faster at scrolling. <laughs> the Halloween print, summer fun print, sexy swimsuit print, volume one cover bookmark, Halloween bookmark, made Ivy Chibi sticker. Okay, okay. Uh, an Ivy Violet uh, must have. How do you? How, Mustafa. 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 Thank you. I'm not Pronunciations sure. are my I'm weak sorry. suit. <laughs> yeah, and and particularly names that are maybe like of you're not very familiar with and that are not maybe part of like your mm -hmm. everyday culture can be difficult. And then several original paintings as well. So uh, right here. No, those are the the prints. So this is the oh, Halloween prints. Print. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all the prints are laminated uh, so that they don't they can't be damaged in shipping they can't be bended or torn they can be cut with scissors but because they're laminated if you want to um it's fine because you can clean them off later whoa hey <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, you're fine i'm sorry <laughs> i apologize no you're you're good you're good this uh this, <laughs> yeah, this podcast laminated, so it's good. Is, is, is as fun as my guest makes it i'm all about having as much fun as possible this has been a good time <laughs> So right here is the summer fun print as well. Mm -hmm. And then the sexy swimsuit print. And then I, I love this, like talking in the background in the little inner tube. <laughs> and then DJ Shaddy image doobie with a, with a hand up. Mm. Oh, thank you. I mean, it might not be very visible here, but I, I planned the, the sexy swimsuit design very carefully because you've got some side boob some mm. cleavage, some underboob, so. For anyone that wants to zoom in, go ahead. Your moment is now. <laughs> and I mean, and the link is in the chat too. And while these are available in like the, the tier where you can get everything, there are also available as add-ons. Mm -hmm. Oh, right here's the, the sticker. This is cute. I like this. Thank you. I like it too. All right, and then here are the original paintings. Wow, this is gorgeous. I love the sunflower so much. Yeah, this took me ages to do, but it's one of my favorite ones. Uh, is, this is, a, is this a cover? No, it's a original painting that I, I finished relatively recently. Let's see if I can find it. So I've got the folder. With all the I, I, love, I love how she's put on the lipstick too. Yeah this one right here no that is gorgeous 
yeah, gouache on canvas paper. Uh, so we and like the oh, picture is nice, but like in person, it's so much nicer. Like, like mm -hmm. I'm sharing it on the cam uh, if you want to share. Hold one more second. Like oh, the yeah, picture that... is nice, but it, it looks so much nicer in person. Well, oh, that looks really good. I I love the 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 vines and the leaves. Thank you. It it's because it's good. ivy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the, the, that was gorgeous. Uh, did you use like some like some sort of different like uh, paint or anything? It looked like it was almost shiny. Oh, I used gold pen for okay. the, the 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 vine for the the veins. And the yeah, leaves. yeah, yeah. No, that that was pretty. That was pretty. Uh, we have DJ Black. Oh my God, was it the painting yeah. you sent the Yuri GL server? It is. It is. Also, hello, Casey. Oh, hi, Casey. Welcome to the stream. And then some of the not safe for work as well. Yeah, but it's censored here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at the frog suit. There, I, there was a friend that like really, really, really wanted to get this. Uh, it's possible that it may not be available anymore, but after the stream, I'll take a look at what has been, mm -hmm. um, what has already been taken, so I can add the not available to the image description if anything has already been taken. The cowboy falcon. I love these designs so much. The froggy one's Thank so cute. You. It is. And then here are the stretch goals. But before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, kind of go through the tiers on the side. Sure. So you want to have... share? Hold on. While we go through the through the tiers, you want to share the the sexy swimsuit image on yeah, the left? Yeah, yeah. So people have something to look at. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So we have uh, back it because you believe in it for ten bucks, and then you get the uh, the volume three digital PDF. Uh, for about six dollars. Well, so I'm gonna say the U.S. value, or or do you want me to say? Are I, I would assume that I'm most of the people watching, or. like here, it does say about six dollars. And keep in mind, I did put like an estimate with some mm -hmm. other currencies, but that estimate was for like from like a month ago when I was preparing the, the Kickstarter page. So it might be maybe like I don't know, fifty cents less, fifty cents okay. more. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say like. Instead of saying about okay. six, I'm, I'm just going to say six. And then just keep in mind that it's going to be a roughly around six. Yeah. So we have the volume three digital PDF for six bucks. You can get the Sunrise Blossom volume three for 16. And that's going to be the print copy, right? Exactly. So okay. it, and it's really, really like it's this paper is really soft. Like I could use it as a pillow. <laughs> you, might even... get the, you might get that copy that she's rubbing on her face if you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, if you want, I can even spit on it if you want. Um, and also the pages are like nice and glossy. It's really nice. So we have the right here. So for 21 bucks, you can get volume one through three digital PDF. So you're going to get all three. And that's about 300 plus pages oh, yeah, of, it's a of comic. Than, yeah, than 300 pages, like 330 pages. No, oh, that's outstanding price. Sunrise Blossom Volume One through Three physical prints for forty six bucks. So still an outstanding price as well. That's 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 yeah, keep awesome in mind, price. It's like three hundred over three hundred pages. Yeah. Yeah. So for sixty two, you're gonna get the Sunrise Blossom Deluxe Package. Do you want to give us the, that? That's everything that's uh, listed print wise, right? Right. Yes. And then the bookmark and the stickers as well. So that's everything right here that we were looking at. But don't worry, I won't. I won't stray too far from this image. It's okay. <laughs> and then but yeah, for, it's pretty uh, much got so sorry, yeah, the, the deluxe tier pretty much has like the three copies and all the extra merch. Okay. So for 102, you're gonna get the volume three retail tier. So ten copies of volume three. Uh at uh 102 instead of the 155, I'm assuming. So advertisement yeah, tier. So advertise your product or comic and have a page dedicated to your product at the end of the comic, and that's gonna be for 102 bucks. You'll also get a copy of uh, volume three with that too. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, so like you can fact check that it's in there. And then you get uh, volume one through three retail tier for uh, 306. So you're gonna get 10 copies of each of the volumes. And mm -hmm. then that is all the tiers, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out some of these stretch goals. Yay. Hold on, what, what, what last, one last look for you guys. I, I know I know you hound dogs in the chat wanted to see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here are the stretch goals. So for about $1,050 USD, you can get the Doubt Ivy emote pin for everyone who's pledged a physical tier. So all the backers- Is Ivy once... going 
Yeah, no, I love this face. <laughs> and then another pin when we hit uh, 1570, the happy hearts for everyone who pledged a, a physical tier. And then at 2100, volume one cover as a notepad for everyone who's pledged. So I like this too. So something you could jot so on. Five is like yay size. You know, that, that's a good size though. And then at 2630, we have volume one cover magnet for everyone who's pledged a physical tier. And then at 3130, you get the volume two. Mm -hmm. And volume three at $3,650. So I like these. I like these stretch goals. These are easy. These, uh, I, I'm assuming these aren't going to be like breaking the bank either. I see a lot of Kickstarters where people do really extravagant like stretch goals. So I like that. It's something that's easy for you to do. It's nice. These are cute. Uh, like these, these are awesome. I'm loving these magnets too. Thank you. So you can crack open a cold one and look at gay birds. <laughs> and then the, the meme gallery, let's go ahead and check these out too. So yeah, uh, there are a bit, there are fewer memes than for the previous campaign, but I did make a few memes for promotional purposes, which I think are pretty cool. So for uh, promoting and stuff, how has making memes been for you? Is this something that really has taken off? I mean, it's something that has to be taken in its doses pretty much. Because if it's too much, then people are like, eh. But if it's every once in a while, like maybe every couple of days. Because like normally when I would post these, I would post the meme and like the, the cover of the volume. Mm -hmm. So people had a, a bit of an inkling of what it was about. And but it was mostly the people who were already fans <laughs> that enjoyed them. Family of the Harpy spending 20 years kidnapped. This is fine. <laughs> Want to make a comic about a Harpy maker? Gay, <laughs> gay bird so hot right now. <laughs> oh, this is great. No gay bird. <laughs> So that, 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 you just take advantage of the ones that are, are, are trending and, and work your comic yeah, in. I think that, that's a genius much. idea. That is a genius idea. Casey Thank Smith you. over on YouTube saying, I could see an independent bookseller getting the 10 copies. I really it's do think those retailer, stuff. I mean, the retailer tier, even if someone doesn't get it, I mean, it's free to make. So why, like, why not? Like someone might get it and then you, right, there's an extra 300 bucks you would have never had if you never would have made it. Not gonna lie. The retail tier is mostly for my mom. <laughs> Because maybe she'd get multiple copies and then like share some with like friends and family and mm -hmm. like, hey, look what my daughter did. Thanks, mom. Hey, hey, they brought us into this world. They could at least buy our comics, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then risk a challenge. Uh, I mean, you already have the book, essentially. Uh, We're ten dollars away from being funded. Hey, let's go. No $10 way. Ten away. Okay, shit. Um, does does anyone want to give me ten bucks so I can say I got I got funded in an hour? Because, like, uh, we launched, like, what? A an hour ago, almost? Almost an hour ago. No, this is exciting, dude. Holy crap. I yeah, I forgot to even look. I can't believe... That's wild. Hold on. You know ah. what? I'll be the one that pushes you over. Mm -hmm. mm. How, how fitting. How fitting. Hey, you know what's funny? I remember the first time that I, I went to back. Um, It was, I think, on... Uh, I forgot what, what what was volume two on? Was that Indiegogo or was that uh? No, the volume one was an Indiegogo. Volume two was in Kickstarter. So I remember I I forgot to double check and my pledge dropped because I didn't I had to like redo my payment and I like I for, I didn't know you had to double check that type of stuff. Oh, that's okay. Ah! Boom, baby. Heck Boom, baby. Yeah. Let's go. In an hour. Hundred percent of in goal. An hour. I'm How do you gonna get the projects we love back? Yeah, let's Come go. On, daughter, make it rain. <laughs> let's go. Thank you, Cody. No, no, I, I told you, I, I, I had, I had, I had. That was the only project I've ever dropped. I felt so horrible, and well, like no, I didn't. Fine, because I, uh, I honestly, there were so many people that I also did live streams with that like pledged maybe during the live stream to show support. But then, like, maybe it's right before the project finished, they backed out, and I was like... Do people okay. do that? Or maybe, like, they pledge, I don't know, 10 bucks, and then they're like, you know what, let me change that to one. 
which is like it's fine it's okay so i i was just like i just assumed it was like oh that's okay oh my god no i problem. hope you didn't assume i was one of those people oh no, even if that were the case it's totally fine because it while it was up it greatly improved the algorithm in my favor mm-hmm no, it's, yeah, I and then it was after that I learned I was like, okay, well, I need to check my email and these websites like every freaking day, every freaking day. No, this is so awesome. So we completely funded right during the uh, the interview, the podcast. That is so awesome. What a good launch party. Let's get some uh, let's get some hype in the chat. Yay! We we have hype in the chat. Yeah. No, that is awesome. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's uh, move back to our main camera. Oh, thank you, Shadi. You deserve all the support. Yeah, you do. You really do. You really do. I'm so excited you got this funded. Congratulations. What do you want to say right now? How do you, you know, how do you feel? Like, let's, let's get, let's get a speech out of the way. <laughs> Hold on. I'll have some like inspirational music playing right now. Like when okay. I post production. <laughs> okay. Mm. Follow your dreams, but remember to be gay, do crime. Okay. I, I'm sorry. My brain isn't fully functioning at the moment. <laughs> Big no. excite. I'm really happy because like the previous volume, uh, volume two did also really well on Kickstarter. It was funded in two hours, but that was funded in one hour. It was yeah, like, let's hey, go. That, this let's is what go. happens when you keep it geek. This is, this is what happens. All right. <laughs> so I'm almost certainly going to ask you to host my launch party for the next volume because you bring me luck, man. Oh my God. Now I'm going to have to be like, all right, guys, so we have to do it. We have to get this done in 30 minutes. <laughs> No, no, that that's a bit much. But if it does happen, like like it's rare for projects to be funded in one hour. But like, yay! I'm glad. Yeah, no, that yeah, that's so Thank cool. You, that everyone. is so cool. So you got 29 days. What what's that going to be like for you? I mean, like promotional wise, uh, advertising wise, like what were you looking at doing and trying to implement? Well, I launched today because it was technically my, like my last day of work slash first day of holiday. So like I'm going to be off of work for two weeks and I can focus on promotion. And I'm going to be live on like Twitch, Facebook and stuff almost every day mm -hmm. promoting, like drawing. Like tomorrow I'm going to be working on Patreon commissions for, for the month. And I'm going to be streaming those and like being like, hey, welcome, check out my Kickstarter and regularly also like posting on various Facebook groups, Twitter, subreddit, mm -hmm. Facebook groups and the partridge and the pear tree and so forth. <laughs> we have uh, DJ Shaddy. Do you have any future projects or any projects aside from Sunset Blossom? Sunrise Blossom. Sunrise. Um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I... <laughs> I know, I know. I, you were just, I was reading the prompt. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Well, um, yes and no. Like in my uh, studio, I do have a folder very similar to this one with like story ideas that I would like jot down and put in the folder that I've kept ever since I was 13. And every once in a while, maybe I go through them just for any ideas and most of them are shit because I was like 14, 15 and stuff. <laughs> but sometimes when I have a good idea, I'm like, oh, this would make a nice comic story. So like I jot down like the main ideas and then put it in the folder for future reference. But Sunrise Blossom is going to be keep is going to be keeping me busy for the foreseeable future. Like the way it is now, it's definitely going to be maybe I don't know, more or less give or take six, seven, eight, maybe even ten volumes, uh, like of, of around like fifty pages each. And I don't want to drag it on too long. I do want to give it an organic ending, but yeah for the foreseeable future. And yes, Shadi, I am going to stream it on YouTube too. Technically speaking, I don't remember if this is the YouTube channel that I was stream on because I've got, yes. So technically I'm going to like dot in the chat. Beep, boop. And this is also like where I'd be streaming my, my art on. Ooh, and um, I, I mentioned before, I had completely forgotten um that there's the extra episode that isn't public yet that i can share as a sort oh of yeah like, yeah as a sort of like um what's the word 
What's the word? Treat? What's, the, what's the word? Treat? Treat. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, hold on. Let me... Hold on, let me fix the image. And I'll switch over there here and get ready. Okay, let me share. Do, 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 do. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. All right, and then we're adding this to stream. So a, a little bit of an exclusive look for you guys. Which is something that isn't public yet, but I am going to post it probably next week or the week after that. So this is most likely what the art is going to look like in volume four. This uh, is good. A lot more polished. Yeah, thank you. I've been there. I got three kids, so I've been there before. <laughs> Yo, little head smooches. Mm -hmm. I love the hair too, like the highlights in the hair. Yeah. yeah, so this is pretty much like an extra episode that is a bit of like several years into the future kind of kind of deal. Shirt pulling, okay. Her face is like per permanently red. <laughs> well, yeah. I love it. It, it, it is <laughs> morning. It is also morning. And I don't know about you, but my face is always very red. No, I, I blush that easy too, though, you know? Yeah. And there we go. That's the sneak peek. We got some hype in the chat for wipes. Wipes? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. no that is so awesome that is so awesome you got you got everybody hyped everybody is hyped i can't wait because now now we can promote this not only as the stream that helped you get pushed over the edge but the exclusive for that chapter too that is uh mm -hmm. two birds one two harpies one stone, <laughs> two birds, one stone. <laughs> yeah yeah that is so awesome so what's next for you um you know, you, you got volume four. You said you scripted it out. When are you going to start working on the art for it? Well, um, because I don't get the opportunity very much to like work on my art because I'm always working on comic and commissions. Uh, I am going, I have, it is all scripted and I am going to work on the storyboards very soon. But the next couple of days I want to, I've been doing a lot of like art studies, anatomy studies, clothes studies, and, like the classic art theory study stuff that you that you should do every once in a while to improve your art so i've been doing that i've got like a sketchbook that is like hands hands feet 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 <laughs> hands legs feet faces <laughs> to like slowly like work on improving my art a little bit but for patrons in particular the ones that have the, the early access content the first few pages of volume four should be available before this campaign ends technically that's awesome so, yeah in late august oh that is awesome and for everyone that is watching here is the link to the kickstarter once again if you're not able to back be sure to just share it uh freaking hands are the hardest they really are i remember when i used to draw as a kid like i would draw like the little dragon ball z guys i think everyone did at one point i i could never draw the hands so i always try to draw them in fist <laughs> mm -hmm. and honestly feet too man they're so hard yeah, I uh, I'm not very good at art at all, so I, I leave That's that fine. to uh, I I leave that to the artist. <laughs> That's fine. The fact that some people, most people, are not good at art is what allows us to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah. So we have DJ Shaddy. What's your weakest point when drawing? Mm, I have to say maybe um, anatomy in perspective, and particularly dynamic anatomy in perspective. So mm -hmm. that means poses that are unusual and maybe dynamic from a point of view that isn't just direct so maybe it's like from high above or maybe it's like from the bottom or like maybe it's like fisheye or like a dynamic perspective and like maybe there's a lot of foreshortening like this pretty much which can be 
difficult. So anatomy and perspective is really, really hard. And often enough, it, it's one of those few things that, that like, I'm like, I can't do this. I need to look at references. No, uh, I and I I think I remember our first interview. You we were talking about how you were like working through that and how to how you were. I think uh, like a program or something was helping you kind of do some of the backgrounds. Oh yes, backgrounds. Uh, I use mostly uh, SketchUp and other three D assets for the backgrounds because ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> no, that is awesome. And then we have DJ Shaddy uh, foreshortening. I don't think I've ever heard of foreshortening. Yeah, so foreshortening is like, so this is like, you see my my, my arm, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much on the same plane as the rest of my body, right? So it's like the right per, per proportions because it's the same plane. But like when I do like this, then like visually from here to here, it's a lot shorter. And it's hard to maintain the right proportions uh, when like it's shorter like this. So this is foreshortening because something it's maybe closer to the camera. So like not only is my hand bigger in this shot than my head because it's closer to the camera, but also my arm like here, because it's realistic, you wouldn't notice, but it's not like this. My yeah. arm It's not long. It's short. It's foreshortening visually. And it's really hard to maintain. I'm like mind blown right now. <laughs> Said like a true artist uh, from DJ Shaddy. Yeah, no, that is, I, I was not Thank expecting you. to get uh, some uh, teaching courses as well. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I am an ESL teacher as my day job. So it's pretty much what I do every day, all day. No, let's go, drawing. let's go. This has been an awesome, awesome podcast. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate you coming back on. We got to get you back on for volume four. This has to be a exactly. thing now. Definitely. So uh, before we end things completely, let's let's end it strong like we did last time. Uh, and we uh, we already used up the one question, uh, advice for beginners. So let's do something. Let's do something sure. a little bit different. So for anyone or out if there, anyone that's... else, sorry, or also if anyone else also has comments, comments, fuck, questions, <laughs> they want to ask in the comments before we finish. Go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so for anyone that is watching and maybe they're struggling getting their 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 promotions out there, getting eyes on their Kickstarter, getting eyes on their tweets or eyes on their social media posts, you know, what type of, uh, so, you know, advertising would you say they should start with to kind of help them get into the, the routine of like promoting their stuff? Well, the bad, sad thing with advertising, particularly with creative projects, is that it's a lot of trial and error. And what works for me may not work for you. Like whenever I want to promote maybe an art piece or maybe a new episode or something like that, an illustration. Also, hi, grandma. Uh, anyway, <laughs> like normally there's Twitter, like Twitter and Instagram. For me at the moment, they don't work very much because I don't have a big following. But on places like Amino, though I have to reject a lot of sexy rp requests through that app but whatever uh <laughs> you take several... you take what you can get <laughs> exactly several um uh subreddits that fit your niche uh so like for example when it comes to web comics do not post your web comic in the r slash webtoon subreddit for example because there's a lot of people a lot of trolls that open the links and downvote the comic but if you post it like in subreddits related to your niche, like in my case, I post in a lot of like GL subreddits, Monster Girl subreddits, and I gathered a big following from there, as well as like Facebook groups. So hold on, Twitter, Instagram, Amino groups, subreddits, Facebook groups, Discord servers, though particularly with both subreddits and Discord servers, it does help if you try to be active a little yeah. bit in those servers instead of just like link dumping but it's hard mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of trial and error and also like not just where you post but even more importantly what you post and how you present it makes a big difference like whether maybe you post something with a question like hey this is what i do what do you do do you want to share it or maybe if it's something that makes someone laugh a little bit which is why i like to do memes sometimes and share those because it gets a reaction out of people sometimes 
or maybe uh, promotional art that looks good and sometimes mm-hmm. that speaks for itself. Like when I was sharing around the sexy swimsuit uh, design or like the the lipstick gouache painting. So a lot, it, what works for me may not work for others. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of trial and error involved. And it can be frustrating, but it's part of the process. DJ Black, what tips do you have on making scripts, uh, you know, for beginners? Well, scripts, like the way I do it is different from everyone else that I know. And so long as you're working for yourself and writing them for yourself and not from other and not for others, you've got a lot more um, working space. Because normally, if you're writing a script for someone else, you have to plan the paneling, so like the sizes and the amounts of panels, and then you have to like describe the contents of each panel. Like for example, in panel one is a shot of a cemetery from above. There is a crow or a raven in the foreground, which is partially blurred. And then the next panel is the same shot, but it's zoomed in and there's a figure in the cemetery. So they have to go to go in a lot of detail. And often enough written similar to like a film script, Mm -hmm. if it makes sense. But the way I do it, because I write for myself and my scripts are only for reference to me. uh, I write them kind of like this on paper, almost like prose. So like to read out of the script of the special of the little snippet that I showed you earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, where is it? Baby standing up. There you go. It's this with a little snippet. Baby standing up in crib. Shot of it from behind. It says, Ma, Ma. Ivy picks him up. We don't see her face. And sits down in armchair. She feeds him a bottle. Ivy yawns and we see a blurred violet walking towards her and kisses her forehead. V. Uh, morning, uh, lovebird. Vi takes a sip of coffee. Ivy smiles and pulls Violet down, then kisses her lips. Morning, Vi. Vi smiles. So pretty much this is how I do it, just as reference for myself, because it's since I'm writing it for myself and mm-hmm. no one else, it's easier for me to understand. But this is mostly because while I'm writing it down, I already have pictures I- in my head. And by rereading it when preparing the storyboards, and the storyboards are like, uh, where is it? Like this, pretty much. So like, these are the storyboards of like the snippet that I just showed you. Because I already have the pictures in my head, then by rereading the script that I wrote, for myself, it's a lot easier to remember mm-hmm. what I had in my head at the time of writing and then put it down on the storyboard. And after the storyboard is done, I can do the rest of the process with my brain turned off pretty much. <laughs> no, that is so awesome. I-, I love that. I actually started doing a little bit of script writing myself. I uh, told myself at my 100 interviews, if I, uh, if, if I hit 100, that I was going to write a comic book. And uh, so I started studying started. One thing for me is like when ideas start happening, I like to record. So I'll get my phone. I'll actually videotape myself talking it out. So that way I don't miss any details. Uh, we have everyone in chat saying you look so pretty too. Oh, uh, loving you. the flower crown too. Thank you. <laughs> I, I try to wear it whenever I do like a live event mm-hmm. like this with very few exceptions. Like if I'm doing a live stream in which I'm like painting, I'm not going to wear it because it can be uncomfortable for long hours. Um, but I, I, I feel it makes me easier to remember because not a lot of people wear flower crowns. So it's like, ah, oh, yes, you're the gay bird flower crown lady. I remember you. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for anyone in chat, do you guys have any other questions uh, that you would like to send us off on? Uh, we have DJ Shaddy saying this gives me a cottage core feel. I have no idea what okay. cottage core is. Cottage core, it's, it's an aesthetic. It's like okay. a look. So, like, imagine, like, a British cottage and it's, like, in a meadow surrounded by forests and there's birds, there's flowers, there's no stress. There's, it's, like, very, you know, like, maybe you're wearing a, a dress that is very, like, 1850s. Okay. And maybe you've got, like, a fox resting uh, near a bush near your cottage. There's your cat walking around. And that's 
cottage core. I so it's I'm like, thinking like I'm thinking like listening to uh hardcore, like death core, like cottage cores, like wearing a, fr no. a flower crown, like dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a it's a gentle, um, <laughs> flowery, cottagey aesthetic. The foxes are in like the pit. <laughs> no, I love that so much. That is so awesome. We have uh, everybody. Geekly's new quote is, "I'm gay." I, it was just so perfect. <laughs> I love it. You're like voice acting. I was like, Here, "Here's my time to shine." <laughs> my one line. No, that is so awesome. So I think right now actually is a perfect time. Let's go ahead and start wrapping things up on a strong note. We have a completely yeah. funded Kickstarter. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Had an awesome Less vibe an in the chat. You have such a lovely name, which matches your flower crown, uh, Nina Daisy. Yeah, Thank yeah, absolutely. Grandma. That's absolutely. my grandma. Hi, grandma. Hello, hello. Uh, we, we, we just got, uh, Nina's book just got funded. So you, you came in like right at the perfect time too. Mm-hmm. So everyone that's watching, here is the link one more time. You know what to do. Be sure to check it out. Be sure to back if you're able to. If you're not able to, share it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or any social media platforms that you have because word of mouth is important. That Amen. being said, we are going to be wrapping it up. You know, thank you for coming back on. Let's get you back on for volume four and let's yeah. get that funded even quicker. Everybody in the chat, thank you so much for stopping in. I've seen a lot of new faces and I appreciate all of you guys just as much. But most importantly, keep it geekly.